everyone. We still have some people joining, so we're going to get started in just another minute. It looks like there are still some people joining. Um, if you could do me a favor and um, there's a go to webinar uh, chat module, if you could find that on your panel and then let me know you can hear me by, you know, maybe letting me know your favorite ice cream flavor or something like that, that would be super helpful. Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. I really appreciate everyone sending me their delicious ice cream flavors. I might go ahead and go get myself some ice cream after this because that made me really hungry. Um, but I wanted to just welcome everyone to the second uh, Rock Families Companies Community Challenge training webinar. My name is Dawn and I'll be leading you through today's presentation. Um, I am with Mighty Cause, which is the fundraising platform for this year's Community Challenge. Mighty Cause is an employee-owned business. Uh, we're focused on uh, the nonprofit customer primarily. Uh, we do help host giving events of all sizes like the Community Challenge, but we also offer a full nonprofit suite of fundraising tools for year-round giving. Um, today, I'm excited to go over some of those tools that you can take advantage of during the Community Challenge, but before I do that, I do have a few housekeeping items that I want to note um, before we get started. Um, first, I wanted all of you to know that the webinar will be recorded today and posted in the toolkit on the Community Challenge site under the Resources tab. And as many of you just did, you can use the GoToWebinar chat module to send across questions um, that you have during the presentation, and then um, we'll get to as many um, of those as we can after the webinar. Um, but I also wanted to let you guys know, I do have Deneen um, on the webinar from Quicken Loans Community Fund. Deneen is the program manager over there for the volunteer, um, for volunteer engagement and giving. Um, and so I wanted to welcome her today. Hi, Deneen, we're so happy to have you. Hi, thanks, Dawn. I really appreciate the introduction. Um, again, my name is Deneen Nagoy. I'm the program manager of giving for the Quicken Loans Community Fund. I'm very happy to be chatting with all of you this afternoon. I'm super excited that we have so many of you participating. I know there were a few of you who missed uh, the first webinar. So as Dawn said, those are recorded. So definitely take a look at it. She is offering up a lot of hot tips and a lot of information. Um, but I just want to make sure that I'm connecting with all of you to, again, thank you guys for participating. Feel free to reach out to me with any questions. Um, some of this I went over as I said, for the, the organizations that were able to participate in the first webinar. Um, for those of you who are just participating for the first time, welcome. Um, and I wanna let you guys know that we're really excited. This year we have over 130 nonprofit organizations participating in Detroit, Charlotte, excuse me, Charlotte, Phoenix, Cleveland, and as well as 
as other organizations all over the country in our national category. Um, so we are ready to get started. We're just under three weeks out. Um, and I will pass it back to you, Don. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, our pleasure. So here's a look at today's agenda. Um, we're gonna be going over some of the basics. We're going to touch on getting started on the platform and all of the prizes available. So it's it'll almost be like a quick recap of last week's webinar. Although, like Deneen said, I do encourage everyone to go back and review last week's webinar because it goes in uh, in detail about you know customizing your challenge page, all the tools that are available, um, and all that good stuff. <clears throat> um, so um, after we talk about the um, you know the basics and getting started, um, then we're going to talk about leaderboard prizes, um, and then we're going to definitely uh, go over campaign strategy um, and you know all of the items that. Um, you can utilize that come with the campaign bonus challenges and then um you know what tools you can use within your mighty cause accounts to um really make the most of those um and then uh lastly we'll do a q a session um if we have time um so again if you do have a question while i'm presenting just type it into the questions box of your GoToWebinar webinar panel and we'll cover it at the end and then if we do run out of time today um, I'll be sure to email everyone that did not get their question answered um, on the webinar. That way we can make sure everyone's covered. And if we do see a running theme in questions, then I'll be sure to add uh, that particular question to the FAQ on the challenge page so that you all have access to the answers as well. So first, community challenge basics. The uh, 2020 Rock Family of Companies Community Challenge is a four week long event that runs from August 3rd at noon Eastern to August 31st at 11.59.59 a.m. Eastern, so just before noon. Um, while your organization will only be participating with nonprofits in your location, the challenge itself is benefiting five separate mar markets. Um, like the need mentioned, Detroit, Cleveland, Charlotte, Phoenix, and the national category. And the really awesome thing about this giving event is that there is $275,000 of prize money at stake and lots of opportunities to win. Um, and we'll go into prizes a little bit later on. So this is the homepage for the Community Challenge this year. You'll see the URL here at the top. I would definitely bookmark it. Um, you can access each market's page and grand prize leaderboards from this overall challenge site. Um, once the challenge starts, this is where you can find the leaderboards that will show your bonus challenge standings. So make sure to bookmark it now so you have it when you need it. This page also has all the tools you'll need to. Um, you'll see the resources tab where you can find a comprehensive FAQ as well as the bonuses for each location. Um, the challenge rules, which will be coming soon, and uh, general information about this year's community challenge as well. Um, and then the other thing that's under resources now is our um, the toolkit for the challenge that includes lots of information. Um, there's a planning guide. There are um, like a nice checklist um, if you're not sure, you know, how to get started. There's a social media. Um, uh, like one pager that gives you lots of tips on social media. So there's lots and lots of things in that toolkit too that I highly recommend everyone go and check out. So moving on um, to your organization's team page for the community challenge this year. Um, I definitely recommend taking some time to get to know your team page dashboard. Um, first, if you haven't visited your team page yet, that is definitely the first step. Um, you all would have received a link uh, in the original, um, in the first welcome email that we sent last Monday that had your specific team page link um, in it. If you did not get that email or you cannot find it or you're not sure what your link is, uh, please email us at rockchallenge at mightycause.com and we will be happy to grab your link for you so that you can bookmark it and save it and you know, write it down, whatever you need to do to make sure that you remember it and know how to access it. Um, so first, after, well, after you visit your page, then I definitely um, recommend taking some time to get to know your team page dashboard. Um, your dashboard is the admin bar that appears on the left side of the screen when you're logged in and on your nonprofit's team page. 
So you'll automatically land in edit mode, which is the view that you see here in the screenshot when you access your team page. Um, you can always see the public facing view at any time while you're editing by clicking the live page eyeball icon um, that you see on this dashboard here. So under live page is the page editor icon. This allows you to open the page back up for editing if you're not quite satisfied or you know, maybe you have additional changes to make. Then the campaigns icon underneath that um, gives you a quick overview of all the fundraisers that have joined your team page while participants um, gives you visibility into each team member's progress um, and gives you the ability to communicate with them right within the platform. Um, you can also invite new supporters to join your team through that participant section. Um, and then below that on your dashboard is the reports section. Um, you're able to preview and export your team's donation report. Um, and utilize the Mighty Cause Matching Grant Tool, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. And then the last option on your team dashboard is the settings. Within settings, you can update your social share template, um, which is essentially the template you can create for when people share your um, challenge team page on social media. Um, you can also add a fundraiser template to make joining your team super easy for your supporters and you can view and manage your challenge checkout flow um, by adding suggested donation amounts and customizing the thank you page that donors see after they complete a transaction. So there's lots and lots of things that you can do with your team page for the challenge. So I highly recommend you know, clicking through, um, looking to see what everything, what's involved. Um, and then of course, if you need any help at all, as you're looking through, you're not sure what something means, um, you can always email us or call us. Um, our support information will be at the end of the, this webinar too. Um, and uh, I believe it's on the challenge site as well, but I'll make sure, I'll double check on that. So your team page is the face of your nonprofit for the 2020 Community Challenge. So you'll want to make sure that it looks good and represents your organization well. Um, so just so you know, your team page link is the link that you'll share with supporters to ask them to donate to your challenge page. So to share your page, just copy and paste the URL into an email or a social post or wherever you're advertising the campaign. So as you're getting started, you know, you'll want to customize that team page to match your brand. Um, there are two ways to start customizing. You can click page editor in your dashboard. This will open up everything that you're able to edit. And if you're a list person, you can go down the list that opens after choosing page editor to make sure that you hit everything that you want to. And then the other way to customize, as you can see in the visual here on the slide, um, is to use the little pencil icons that appear on the page to indicate a section can be edited. Um, just click the little pencil icon and that section will open right up for editing. So also within your settings section um, that I want to highlight is the um, checkout flow. Uh, and then within this checkout flow, you can adjust the beneficiary settings, um, which is where you can go to um, customize those uh, pieces that I talked about just a second ago, the suggested donation amounts um, and the thank you page. So this, the checkout flow section is probably one of the more important features to focus on when you're setting up your organization's team page. Um, the checkout flow gives you a lot of control over the donation um, process for your organization during the challenge. So it allows you to opt into collecting the information that you need from donors like addresses and phone numbers. Um, you can also set up those suggested, those, um, suggested donation amounts and you can add descriptions uh, to help tie those amounts to you know, items or services that your nonprofit provides, which you know, really just strengthens your appeal um, to donors. And then the checkout flow also allows you to preview the whole checkout process without actually making a test donation. So you can see what your final process looks like and use that to edit yourself if needed. Um, and then the checkout flow is also where you'll go to set up your thank you page, which uses the same um, text editor um, as your story section on your team page. Um, so you know if some of you have gone in there and started editing, on the thank you page, you can also add text, you can add links, you can add a video or image. Um, you can also add a custom call to action button that tells donors where you'd like them to go next. So a, a cool idea would be, for instance, um, you know, asking them to sign up for your email list, um, to share a graphic from your organization on social media, 
Um, there's a lot you can do in the checkout flow tool and with that call to action button to really optimize your campaign and just totally customize the checkout process for uh, your donors. So you'll definitely want to spend some time customizing um, your organization's team page um, because really the more work you put into it, the chances are the better you'll do during the community challenge. So, you know, you can have the best campaign strategy in the world, but when your, your challenge page, the page where people are actually going to make donations, looks like you haven't really done anything to it, um, then you could end up losing donors. So if you haven't done so yet, um, you're going to need to upload documentation to make sure that uh, you, your organization can receive any prize grants um, that you win during the challenge. Um, you'll need to provide your organization's W-9 and your most recent 990. Um, this paperwork is due by July 31st. Um, you can find the link to upload the paperwork on the challenge website. Um, there's a menu tab that says NPO paperwork um, that you can click on and uh, get this screen that you see right here on the um, webinar screen. Um, so again, the challenge website is rockcommunitychallenge.com and then you'll get an email once we've received your paperwork confirming receipt. So if you have any questions at all about the paperwork or accessing where to upload it, you can always email us at rockchallenge at mightycause.com. So moving on from the prize documentation, but before we get to the actual prizes available this year, um, I want to make sure I mention the really great tools that you have access to um, right on the challenge website. The nonprofit toolkit um, has tips and tricks. It's got an FAQ. It's got walkthroughs. Um, it also has email and social templates that you can use um, or, you know, just view to help you get inspired and figure out how to promote your campaign. Um, the toolkit is also where you'll be able to find today's training recording as well as last week's training recording. Um, and you'll be able to um, really soon uh, find logos and graphics that you can download to start tying your brand into the Community Challenge brand. So make sure that you um, refer back to the toolkit um, all the time as you're planning your campaign to make sure that you're taking advantage of everything. Community Challenge Prizes. So we're now going to move into talking about all the awesome prizes the Rock Family of Companies Community Challenge has to offer. So this year's Community Challenge is offering five grand prize grants to the organizations that raise the most in each market. Um, the grand prize leaderboards for each market are on the specific market subpage. Um, as soon as the challenge begins, participating organizations will start getting tracked by the dollars they have raised. So it's important to mention that only online donations made through the Mighty Cost platform count for leaderboard totals. So this is a big reason why you wanna push your donors to give online. You can definitely record a check that's given to you. It just won't be reflected in your leaderboard totals. Um, basically the reason for that is because we don't and can't really um, verify offline donations. Uh, the leaderboard will reflect your cumulative total from the time the challenge begins at noon Eastern on August 3rd. So it's a running total of everything you've raised online. And, you know, here is where you're engaging in, in some friendly competition for those top prizes. So as you can see on the screen here, um, you know, each market has relatively its own grand prize structure. Detroit first place wins $25,000, second gets 15, third gets 10 fourth gets um, 7,500 and fifth gets 5,000. Cleveland, Phoenix and Charlotte all have the same uh, grand prize breakdown. First gets 15,000, second gets 10,000, third gets five, fourth gets uh, 2,500 and fifth gets 1,000. And then the national category um, has its own as well. First place gets 7,000, second place gets 4,000, third gets 2,500, fourth gets 1,000 and fifth gets $500. So there's lots of additional prizes as well. Um, we do have a specific bonus geared just for small organizations that runs through the whole campaign. And please note the budget size threshold to participate in this bonus is still being determined. Um, part of that is based on um, the numbers we see in the 990s that um, everyone uploads. So you'll want to make sure that you submit that paperwork so we can get an accurate reading on, um, you know, who 
can be involved in all that good stuff. Um, there's also lots of matching funds available, um, as well as some unique donor uh, bonuses, most raised bonuses. Basically, there's lots of opportunities to win. Um, so all of these prizes, method of entries, and dates associated with them are on the challenge site at rockcommunitychallenge.org um, under the bonus challenges tab. So you can reference them at any time. Um, each market has different numbers of winners or prize amounts. So you'll wanna be sure to reference your market's bonus challenge tab when checking them out. And then bonus prizes will have live leaderboards this year, so you can see where you stand at any time. And then the key to winning them is in getting your donors invested and helping you climb the leaderboard. So make sure you're keeping tabs on your position on the leaderboard and keep your donors and supporters updated on, on where you stand. You know, continually emphasize how much is at stake, how much could this extra prize money do for your charity? What would that help you achieve? Um, tie, tie all that back into your overall messaging about what you do and why you do it to really get people excited about helping you win that money. Um, and then another trick is to just concentrate on sustaining momentum, keeping the fundraising going, you know, and starting and finishing strong. So now we're going to jump into a specific campaign strategy for this year's community challenge. Uh, the leaderboards um, provide some of the biggest prizes available in the Rock Family of Companies Community Challenge, and the key to winning them is in getting your donors invested in helping you climb the leaderboard. Um, I will reiterate that because it, it's important to let people know where you stand um, so that they can be invested in helping you, you know, get up there into that first place slot. You know, keep tabs on your position on the leaderboards, keep your donors and supporters updated on where you are. Um, you know, again, as you're going through and, you know, planning out your messaging for this year's campaign, make sure that you uh, include uh, emails and social posts about um, where you stand on these leaderboards, not only the, the grand prize leaderboard, but also the bonus challenge leaderboards um, that you're that you're specifically going after. Take screenshots of the leaderboards, share those on social media, try to make it as interactive as possible for, for people um, so they can visually see where you're at um, at all times. So since the community challenge is a month long event, um, the trick to making the most of the event is to sustain your fundraising momentum. Um, one great way to do that and make sure that your campaign is on track is to set mini goals for your nonprofit to help generate buzz and build excitement. So the great thing about the community challenge is the weekly bonus challenges that you can win. Um, so you can utilize those to help sustain that fundraising momentum and get people excited about helping you win those prizes. Um, so basically you'll want to think about what is your organization's overall fundraising goal? You know, what, what are you going to need to raise each week or each day to get to that fundraising goal? Um, and then typically the first and last weeks um, of the challenge are going to be the strongest just because, you know, the first week everyone's out of the gate, everyone's excited. And then the last week you've got that upcoming deadline and the sense of the real, the really big sense of urgency that's, um, that's happening. So, um, typically, those first and last week last weeks will be the the ones that you might be able to see people engage uh, the most. So, you know, you might want to think about ways now just to boost your the middle weeks of the the challenge, the campaign. Um, you could do that by utilizing a matching grant, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, you can definitely use the bonus challenges. So, um, start brainstorming ways of how can we keep up the fundraising momentum. Um, how much do we need to raise per week? Uh, in order to help us reach our, our overall uh, fundraising goal. So something else that you can do to get your campaign rolling is asking for seed donations. Um, these are donations from people in your nonprofit's inner circle that you know essentially break the ice with donors um, because no one really likes to be the first donor. Uh, people love seeing pages that already have action on them. You know, people are already taking uh, uh, you know, investing in them and, and really getting the word out there. So people like to know that they're joining something that's already successful. Um, so, you know, seed donors do help get that ball rolling and they're called seed donations because they, you know, make the number of donations grow. 
Um, and, you know, people that ask for a seed donation would be your board, your staff, um, you know, especially those who are director or C-suite level leaders, if you have them at your organization. Um, volunteers are a great group to ask, um, or really anyone else at your nonprofit who's highly engaged in your work. You know, these don't have to be huge donations, but getting a little bit in the bank by tapping the people in your inner circle really does help your campaign move forward and get those donations coming in. So another great strategy for driving donations um, during uh, a giving event like this challenge is securing a matching grant. Um, a matching grant is essentially a large donation that your nonprofit leverages to bring in other smaller donations by offering it up as a match. So for instance, if you had someone willing to give you, um, let's say $1,000, instead of just putting that money in the bank and calling it a day, you could use it as a matching grant. So the terms of the grant are totally up to you and the grantor, but let's say there's a, a bonus challenge available and you'd like to do whatever you can to drive donations during that week so you can win. So you take that thousand dollars that somebody gave you as a match and say to your followers, you know, hey, between this day and this day, donations will be matched up to a thousand dollars, which basically allows your donors to double their donation. Um, you can do a lot within the Mighty Cause Matching Grants tool, like you, you know, you could set a cap for donation matching, say like $200. So if someone doesn't come along and make a big donation and, you know, eat up your entire match. So the matching grants tool is a really cool and complex little tool that allows you to do a ton with your matching grant. Um, and on the Mighty Cost platform specifically, we've seen that matching grants, especially on, um, you know, these during these giving events can be a really powerful way to drive donations. So if you've never done a matching grant before or you're not sure about it, let us know. Um, we're happy to help you, uh, you know, work through it, set it up. Um, you can email us at rockchallenge at mightycause.com. So since, you know, a matching grant is ultimately just a large donation, you'll want to follow the same process as you would when you secure major gifts. Um, so you prospect, you cultivate, and you ask. Um, people you should consider as prospects for a matching grant are um, board members, first and foremost. Um, you know, sometimes an individual board member will be happy to provide a matching grant, uh, but one thing you can also consider is asking your board to work together to provide a match. So if your board, you know, still has to pay its dues, for instance, you could utilize their dues by turning it into a matching grant. Uh, major gift donors um, are also um, a really good prospect. You know, those people who have given large donations to your nonprofit in the past, um, providing, having them be able to provide a matching grant can be a fun way to liven up their donations. So instead of just writing a check, they're actually helping your nonprofit grow and drive other donations. Um, and you can also give that donor some extra recognition when you're promoting the match. So, you know, major gift donors who like a little shout out are even better matching grant prospects. Uh, corporate sponsors are also good prospects um, because, you know, it's a fun, proactive way for them to get involved in, you know, a really public way and draw attention to their philanthropy. Um, at, you know, at this stage in the game, you can start, you know, making phone calls, setting up emails and, and start uh, cultivating those prospects by letting them know, you know, what you're doing. We're participating in the challenge. We're thinking about doing a match during week three of the challenge. Um, you know, see how those people, how warm they might be to the idea of getting involved. Um, and then in the coming weeks, you can make your ask and, and, you know, shore up those details of the match and get it set up on the site. Um, and you can have more than one match running at the same time on Mighty Cause. So if you do get a lot of great responses, a lot of people wanting to provide matches for you, which is awesome, don't feel like you have to just pick and choose one. Um, you can set up uh, multiple matching grants and you can set them up in sequence if you want. So there's lots of flexibility there. Um, at the end of the day, you know, a matching grant really is a marketing tool. So in order to make the most of your matching grant, you're definitely going to need to promote it. So the first step is going to that matching grant tool um, on your community challenge page, um, which you can find it under the report section of your dashboard um, and add that matching grant in that section. Um, there's some marketing tools built into the platform for your matching grant, um, such as, you know, we put a sticker on your donate button when a grant is active, just to everyone who comes to your site can see, oh, there's a matching grant. 
they can click on it. It'll um, bring them to the details of the grant so they know who's sponsoring it, if you've included that information, and you know what it takes to for them to um, get their dollars matched. Um, and then um, there's also some changes to your checkout process that reflect the match, and um, the match gets listed uh, on your uh, team page as well. Um, you'll also want to add some information to your uh, story or about section on your team page, um, especially if it's a big match, and obviously promote it on all your social media channels, send out an email, um, you know, just let all your followers, your supporters know about the match. Um, countdowns also add urgency, so counting down and sharing your progress for the match can be a really great way to get people excited and urge them to stop what they're doing and make a donation. Um, this is also a great um, kind of thought to go off of for those middle weeks of the challenge. Um, if you're able to secure your own match, um, you can utilize your own match urgency um, along with the bonus challenge um, for you know whatever week uh, you're going after. And then that way you have the extra sense of urgency, the extra deadline, and it just not only adds um, to the, uh, you know, the way that your donors are responding to it, but then it's also uh, giving you more messaging opportunities and reasons to post on social media, um, just kind of to get them excited about it too. So moving on from matching grants, um, I do wanna talk a little bit about ambassadors. Uh, ambassadors are people who are usually in your nonprofit's inner circle who can help boost your campaign. So that includes board members, volunteers, uh, especially ones who are highly engaged, staff members, and so on. Um, utilizing ambassadors can help you break out of your list of existing supporters and engage new people, um, people that you wouldn't otherwise have access to. So an ambassador can help you in a few different ways. Uh, they can simply share a link to your team page within their social cir circle to ask them to donate um, and help you know, boost your campaign for the community challenge. Um, if you have a board member, for instance, who's really well connected, this can be a really big boost, um, or they can help by getting involved in um, team fundraising or peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So team fundraising, which all of you um, have been equipped with a team page for the Community Challenge this year, um, team fundraising is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So basically, you deputize your supporters to fundraise on your behalf. Um, the Mighty Class platform is set up for really easy team fundraising, so this can be a really great way for you to shake up your campaign and acquire those new donors. Um, so, you know, you would ask ambassadors um, like, you know, your board member, uh, volunteers, all those people um, that we talked about previously to join your community challenge team. Um, so this may sound like a big ask, but it's often a really fun way to engage your biggest supporters and allow them to tell their own story about your nonprofit you know, how they came to work with you and why your work is important to them. Um, and this doesn't distract or draw attention away from your campaign because they're operating alongside your campaign. They're reaching out to people they know personally for donations. Um, in most cases, it's their friends and colleagues and family. Um, and these people are not people that your nonprofit would normally have access to to solicit for donations. So you're actually picking up new donors through peer-to-peer -peer team fundraising most of the time. Um, you know, so for people like your board, volunteers, staff, program alumni, you know, this could be a really great way for them to get involved without just being asked to give money. Um, and it, it can make it just be so much more meaningful for them too than just making that donation or sharing a link. Um, so really it could be part of your stewarding process, um, you know, building and sustaining a relationship with that supporter. Um, we've also seen nonprofits get some really great peer-to-peer -peer action going by just inviting people on social media or sending them an email asking for their help. Um, for younger people, especially who have a big social network and are really comfortable online, but maybe they don't have a lot of cash to give, this can be an excellent way for them to help out and make a meaningful contribution. So to help make things easier for them, for those people who do decide to join your challenge um, team, um, you can share some images, some talking points, facts, and logos with them. Try to make it as easy as possible for them. Um, remove those barriers for them to join your team and really be successful with it. Um, 
you know, one of the ways you can create a, a template fundraiser that people can use to get set up more quickly. And basically this um, pre-fills some sections of their pages. Um, so you can email, you know, team and event members as well through the platform to keep them motivated. Um, so, you know, nonprofits that utilize the peer to peer fundraising do tend to raise more money during these giving events. Basically, you're not the only one working at this. There are others who are working alongside of you um, to help raise funds for your cause. So it's not all on you when you do enlist other people to help you fundraise, which can be super helpful, um, especially during uh, a campaign like the challenge like this. Um, so the timeline really is great for, for you to get started on, on making those asks for people to join your team. Um, you know, it's a good thing to do it now so you can get them set up for success so then they can begin mo raising money with you on August 3rd. So your email list um, is going to be one of your most important tools during the community challenge because emails are, you know, that direct line to your supporters. So unlike social media, you don't have to worry about an algorithm getting in your way or preventing people from seeing what you send them, because unless they've unsubscribed, um, it'll end up right in their inbox and, you know, probably send them a notification on their phone. So I do want to talk for a bit about email strategy, because that's going to be really important for the challenge. Um, in general, you'll want to keep emails relatively short, simple, and skimmable. Most people read their emails on their phone these days, so they're not going to want or have time to read a novel. Um, they really just want to be able to skim and get to the point. Um, people are much more likely to read emails that pertain directly to them, so I highly recommend segmenting your email list by sorting donors into a few key groups. Uh, maybe donors who have given a lot or give on a regular basis, um, your one-time donors, uh, people who have utilized your services but never donated, um, your board, your volunteers, etc. cetera. Um, you don't need to craft entirely new emails to each of these groups, but you can tweak small things about the emails for each group to make it more personal. So, for instance, um, in an email to volunteers, you want to acknowledge how they already help your nonprofit so, you know, you wouldn't want to send an email to a major gift donor either asking for a $25 donation. That, you know, doesn't really make sense. Um, so identify your key segments and figure out how to tailor your message to them. When an email is tailored, you know, to who the recipient is and the relationship they have with your organization, then they're much more likely to read it and take action on it. And then how you segment depends on the program you're using. Um, but most services like Constant Contact and MailChimp do use tags to segment groups of people on your email list to try and make it easier for you. And then another thing um, that you'll want to uh, kind of think about and pay close attention to is the timing of your emails, especially if you're aiming to win a bonus prize. Um, I would recommend taking the time to schedule as much as you can beforehand and have a template email ready for things you need to send out on, um, you know, the day of like launch or the last day or any, um, you know, bonus challenge start times that you're going after. Um, have those, uh, you know, during campaign template emails ready to go. Um, that way you're, you know, not wasting time on crafting an email and then maybe the, uh, the time has passed. Um, you could create a blast email, like asking people to help you get your campaign goal or an announcement that you just won a prize. Um, as I mentioned before, most people read their email on their phones. So make sure that you choose a mobile friendly email template and test it out beforehand. You know, try it on an iPhone, try it on an Android and so on. Make sure that it looks the way that you want it to look. And then of course, leading up to the event, um, we, we also recommend doing some A-B testing if you're able to, especially with subject lines, because you'll want to make sure people are driven to actually open your emails for the challenge. You know, try out different subject line formats. Try things like adding emojis. You see what works better. Um, if you've already done this and you know the kind of subject lines that, you know, people who support your organization uh, open, that's awesome. But this is a this is a great opportunity for you to kind of test that out if you've never done that before. Um, you know, A-B testing, if you're new to that term, is basically splitting an email up 50-50 and testing a variable. Um, so let's say you're testing a button color or a subject line, you know, half your list gets sent email A with one subject line, and then half gets email B with another subject line, and then whichever email opens, 
get to open the most wins. Um, you know, for the button color or placement, the email with the most clicks would win. So you, you want to be careful about testing too much, throwing too many variables in there, um, you know, because then it'd be really hard to say why something won the test and performed better. But if you're able to, um, you have a little bit of bandwidth and you have time, um, try doing those A-B tests so that you know what will work for your organization during the, the challenge. Uh, and then lastly, your call to actions in your emails should be clear and action oriented. You know, give now, donate now, help us today. More passive call to actions like, you know, thanks for donating or please contribute. Those aren't as effective. You you really want to be crystal clear and urgent. So um, just quick recap on email strategy, just short, simple messages, tell them you know, if you, you know, you want to include information about your organization, keep it short and simple, and then make sure that the call to action is super clear. Like, give now, here's the deadline, um, here's the bonus challenge we're going after, et cetera, so that they know exactly what they want to do. The last thing you want is to get somebody who is actually opens your email, and then they're not sure what they're supposed to do after that. And then the other thing to remember um, with emails and then also with um, the next slide I'm going to be talking about with social media, always include the link to your challenge team page. Um, never send them an email where they have nothing to click on, not, nowhere to go. Um, always include that challenge uh, team page link and that way they always have somewhere and you know your call to action makes sense to them. So for a high stakes campaign, um, you know, like the community challenge, um, I, I highly recommend staying in your comfort zone when it when it comes to social media, you know, go where your audience is. So like what I mean by that is if you've never logged into TikTok before in your, you know, your whole life, you do not need to use TikTok for the community challenge. Um, if you have a thousand followers on your Facebook page, but only a handful on Instagram, you know, you should spend way more time and effort promoting your campaign on Facebook than Instagram. You know, stay in your lane, basically. You put, put your efforts into the platform where you're most likely to reach people and have an impact. Um, I also recommend scheduling any posts that you can ahead of time, just to save yourself a lot of trouble during the challenge and leading up to it. You know, get your key content scheduled with Facebook's publishing tools or Creator Studio, go into TweetDeck and schedule your tweets, Really save any live posting for stuff that needs to be done same day, like thanking a donor, updates on your progress, prize announcements. Um, and then to that end, if you're able to, you'll want to assign a point person to monitor social media so you can quickly respond to comments and interact with your followers. Since you know that is super important on social media and the interaction can also help you in terms of the algorithm, since most platforms do show priority to post with lots of engagement. So um, if you're able to, I do recommend budgeting a little money um, to boost some posts or promote some tweets. Uh, and then on social media, you know, $20 for an ad can really go a long way. So you'll want to make sure that your ad is targeted properly. And if you're not sure how to target an ad, you can always default to targeting to the people who like your page or already follow you. Um, and then in terms of the type of content that will do well on social media, it, it depends a little bit on the platform. But in general, photos and videos do really well. And then you may want to consider doing something out of the box, like a Facebook Live video um, or, you know, a streamed watch party or something um, for a campaign video to just to help generate some buzz while delivering that algorithm friendly content. And especially uh, nowadays, I know a lot of people sometimes will um, do like live events and things like that, which now it's a little bit more difficult to do that um in some places very difficult so um if you've never done a facebook live stream before or never streamed anything like i would i would highly recommend you know looking into it to see if that's something that would work for you um and you'd be surprised the kinds of things that um people will watch uh it can be as simple as um you know giving them a tour of your office uh that is probably empty um, or, you know, if you are, um, you know, an animal shelter or something, um, or you do something with animals, like uh, film some of the animals, like a lot of people will, will watch live streams of just, you know, the cameras literally just on and watching an animal all day. So, you know, having something that people can interact with, 
um, that you know you can kind of get out there just to do something different. Those are the kinds of things that um, people will respond to, and then um, you know you can get that algorithm friendly content out there on social media to to really get your post in front of even more people because of that engagement and interaction. So finally, you know, when you're planning your campaign, follow up is really important to consider. Um, when you're planning your content, you'll also at the same time want to plan your thank you to donors. You know, things like making a video or a photo of your staff can be really great for this. Um, be sure to talk about the impact of the funds that you raised um, and just close the loop on your campaign. You know, that means if you were fundraising for something specific, uh, like a new piece of equipment or improvements to your building or something like that, um, you'll you'll want to send emails to periodically on your progress. Um, the the follow up can be part of the stewardship process. So let them know how you're doing. Let them know how their dollars worked for you, um, and what your you know what's going on with those. Um, and then you'll also want to make sure that you've got an onboarding plan in place for new donors, so that they come back and donate again. Um, so if you do collect addresses, mailing them in a welcome packet can be a great way to get them onboarded. Um, you can also create an automated email journey where they can get more information about what you do and why it's important to support your work. So um, keeping track you know, of your donors, you get the donation report in your um, Mighty Cause account, making sure that you're aware of how to find that, um, how to download it, and then what information you're collecting um, to make sure that you're getting the most out of it. Uh, and then making sure that you do something with that after the campaign is over. Um, check and see, you know, how many people, um, you know, download or um, donated to your organization's campaign. Um, how many of those were new donors? Uh, make sure that you're taking the time to follow up with them uh, appropriately, depending on, you know, your relationship with them. So as we wrap this up, um, I want to make sure our support team's contact information is here for you to reference. Um, they're a really great resource before and during the challenge for anything campaign related. So if you need help setting up your um, direct deposit, if you need help figuring out how to strategize around the weekly bonuses, or if a donor just needs a receipt resent, you can reach out to them at any time. Um, the challenge support email is rockchallenge at mightycause.com. Um, our support team is available Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Uh, and then their phone number is uh, on the screen as well, 202-800-1618. Um, so make sure that you, you, know, you can write this information down. I'll go and make sure that it's available on the challenge site as well. Um, our priority is support for you guys. So please let us know if you need anything at all. Um, and you know, we'll be happy to help. Okay, so let's see if we have any questions. <laughs> um, let's see. So first question um, that we got, we did get several questions. Um, the first question was about the first webinar. So yes, the first webinar was recorded. Um, and you can access it in the toolkit. So if you go to rockcommunitychallenge.com um, and under resources in the menu, you'll see the nonprofit toolkit and the, the first webinar will be right there. Um, so you can definitely watch it at any time on demand um, and uh, let us know if you have any questions about it. Um, let's see. So, um, Trying to make, I'm looking to see what like general questions there are. Um, okay, so second question was about logos. Um, if you're having trouble fitting your logo in the parameters provided, um, then you're welcome to send your logo to uh, our support team and we can, um, you know, resize it for you if you're not computer savvy. Um, but that will probably be the best bet is um, just re resizing your um, organization's logo. Uh, the, the logo spot is one, a one-to-one -one ratio. So you should be able to grab um, a, the same logo that you use on your Facebook page or your Twitter page, and that will fit in that spot. Um, but if you do have trouble uh, with your logo, then just definitely, you know, you can email our support team 
um, and they'll be able to help resize it for you so that it, it looks really good on um, everywhere that people can see your logo. Um, let's see, next question. Can we know what other nonprofits are participating in our region? Yes. So if you go to rockcommunitychallenge.com, um, you'll see the five different markets on that main challenge site. And then you can click on your market and then all of the participating nonprofits are listed in the leaderboard. They're also listed, if you scroll down on the page, they're also listed um, near the bottom of the page as well. Um, the leaderboard is obviously where all of the um, donations will get tracked. Uh, but um, you know, if you wanna see who else is participating in your particular market, then you'll be able to see that on uh, those leaderboards right there as well. And you can click into anyone's pages to see you know, what their organizations are about. Um, you can also uh, search within your market page for organizations too. Um, so there's a couple different ways that you can find them, but that is probably the easiest is going to your particular market page and looking on the leaderboard. Um, next question, are donors marketed to by um, the Rock family of companies after or during the challenge? Um, I don't believe so, but I will let Deneen answer that question. Yep, so do you mind just repeating that question is what offered? Yeah, so the question is, are donors marketed to by um, the Rock family of companies after or during the challenge? No. Right. Uh, let's see. So next question is, how do you define unique donor? Um, great question. So uh, the unique donor component, there are several different aspects to it. Um, but basically, it needs to be a unique individual. Um, we really don't want people gaming the system. Um, you know, you want to make sure that um, individuals, uh, unique people, uh, donate to your challenge fundraiser in order to win prizes. So as long as it's, um, you know, a person with the first and last name, um, email address, and, uh, um, you know, other unique qualifiers we have back-end uh, ways of being able to make sure that people are unique in order to count them um, so all of that will be defined in the rules as well once those are made available um, okay so next question do quicken loans employees also make their donations um, to our agency's page um, yes so uh, one of the um, you know ways that the Rock family of companies is trying to uh, get their team members to participate is by making donations to your organization's um, challenge team page. So um, one of the bonus challenges for each market is um, the number of uh, individual Quicken Loans uh, Rock family of companies team members that you can get to donate to your page. Um, so definitely that's one thing that they are um, stressing among the team members is uh, participating and making sure that they're aware of all the nonprofits participating, connecting with them and, and donating as well. Um, and Denise, do you have anything to add to that one? No, I think you hit the nail on the head. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. So next question is about matching grants. Um, does the sponsor or grantor of the matching grant submit their match through the online campaign once the match is met? Um, great question. So yes, um, once when you set up your match, you're actually able to put in um, the sponsor's email address um, when you're setting it up so that as soon as the match is met, they're set an automatic email that lets them know that their match has been met and then gives them instructions on how to pay online. Um, so you are, they, they can pay offline if they don't want to pay online, but since this is an online fundraising challenge and all the online donations are what, you know, gets you closer to prizes and the, um, the grand prizes and things like that, then I would definitely recommend having them uh, pay online. But yes, um, they are able to pay their match online after the match has been met. Um, and can find instructions on how to do that. It's really just, you know, the same way people make a regular donation to your team page, click the donate button, um, but they'll they'll get an auto email um, after that as well. Um, and then of course, if you have any questions about, you know, the setup process for that or what that entails, um, you can always email our support team and they'll be happy to kind of walk you through the steps of the matching grant process.
Um, will there be more organizations joining the challenge before August 3rd? Um, or when is the deadline so we can know who we are competing against? Um, all of the organizations that are participating are are in. So no one else, um, as far as I'm aware, will be joining, um, which that's correct, right, Deneen? That's correct. And so just to piggyback off of what Don mentioned earlier, all the participating organizations are on the site. Do you have access to see who is participating within your market? Great. Um, let's see. So um, the next question is clarification on the setup. Um, so every organization participating in the challenge this year um, has the main page that you need to focus on is your challenge team page. And that page is connected to the Rock Family of Companies Community Challenge. That's the page that people can access when they um, view your organization on the leaderboard. Um, all of you also, though, have access to your organization profile page. And that's essentially just uh, a, an overarching um, organization profile um, on Mighty Cause that we you know, basically import from the IRS. Um, so you don't technically need to do anything to that page since people won't really be visiting there. Um, it does give you additional tools and um, uh, like reports and things like that um, that you can access um, if you if you want to. Um, but you can also access your team page there since it um, you know it's kind of an umbrella page for your for your team page. It kind of houses all of the uh, fundraising initiatives that anyone does for you on Mighty Cause. Um, however, to keep things simple, um, the only page you really need to focus on is that that challenge team page. If you're not sure what link you should be using or you're confused, then definitely email our support team at Rock. Um, challenge at mightycause.com and we'll make sure to get you the correct link that you can be that you need to be focusing on um, that way you know you're sharing the right the right one um, and you know what is going on um, let's see Um, this is an interesting question, um, Deneen, that you might be able to help me with. Um, this question is, is each nonprofit assigned a team from Rock Companies to help with fundraising? If so, how can we connect with our team? I don't think that people are assigned an individual person, but I will let you respond. That is a fantastic question. Um, so individual teams are not assigned signed but we do have community champions and those individuals are um some of our team members not only nominated some of you but also then um followed up by volunteering to be well we call a community champion. So essentially those individuals are asked to um, essentially advocate for all of you. Um, and for the organization, everyone want, won't have a community champion. So the team, the challenge, all the community champions um, that have volunteered, they will be asked to share a special um, graphic and um, individuals to donate to your specific organization. And they'll be asked to share that on their social media platforms. Um, so like on Facebook, we also have an internal social media platform. So we do have community champions, um, but no, they're not specific teams designated to organizations. And um, just in case, if anyone wants to ask, um, I will chat with my team on figuring out um, if we are in any way, shape or form sending out information on who those champions are. 
sure some of you probably would like that and would want to connect with those team members who have volunteered to be your champions. So I will figure out a way in which we can connect um, you guys. Some of you actually have multiple community champions. So I will share more information on that. But if you do have specific questions um, that I haven't answered right now, feel free to reach out to me directly as well. We can probably include uh, information to that effect in the FAQ as well, um, just so that everyone participating knows what you guys are doing on the Rock Family of Company side to help promote within the organization, um, because that will probably be helpful too. That's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so last question um, is more of a rules focused question, which again, the rules will be coming out really soon. Um, but this question is, if someone donates $5,000 and the rest of your donations total $2,000, will that single large donation still count towards the total to win the grand prize? Um, so yes, we still, that 75% um, uh, restriction is still in the rules for this year. So you'll want to make sure that, um, you know, no, you don't have one large donor um, contributing uh, to, you know, and let's say that donor, that one donor um, gets you in the top three for your market, um, and then you really only have like four other donors. Uh, we do have that 75% rule um, still applicable this year. So you'll want to make sure that you have, um, each market has a different number of unique donors that are required. Um, as well. So you'll want to make sure that you um, review that information once the rules do come out. And we will be sending along an email with a link to the rules. Um, that way you'll be able to see what pertains to your specific market. Um, let's see. So um, there's several questions about um, the uh, community champions, Deneen. So I definitely um, think that we'll we'll come up with um, a set of uh, FAQ questions about um, the community champions and things like that, and then that way, hopefully, all the questions will be answered. But if you do, um, like once we do put that on the site, um, and you have additional questions about it, then please feel free to email either Deneen or our support team at rockchallenge at mightycause.com. Um, that way, you know everyone's in the know about. Uh, what's going on with that um let's see okay i think that's it um and we are just two minutes over time so apologies for anyone um who you know needed to leave at four but um, that is it for today. I will go through all of the questions again. And if there's any that I accidentally skipped, um, then I'll be sure to reach out um, to those people who asked them. Um, and then we'll be sure to, to um, add FAQs and information about the um, uh, community, um, which I'm probably saying this wrong, but the, the champion um, uh, program that Rock Family of Companies has. Uh, that way you all are aware of what's going on and how they're supporting you from within the organization as well. Um, but that is it for today. Uh, Denise, do you have any last thoughts or anything like that before we go? Uh, no, I just again want to say thank you for, um, you know, joining us on the webinar, obviously, but also joining us for the community challenge. And thank you, Don, for providing so much helpful information. Um, I know Dawn already mentioned this, and I can't personally see the questions, but I'm sure there are lots of burning questions regarding the, the community champions. So I'll be sure to circle back um, with, with my internal team and Dawn to figure out how we can make sure that we are um, quickly getting that information to you. So thank you guys all for being so patient, um, and we will chat with you guys soon. Yes. Thanks, everyone, so much for your time today. Apologies again for running over, and best of luck in the challenge. Have a great day.